Hello and welcome to this extra video. I said I'd bring you the, the initial impressions of this book and here it is. So this is the Imperial Armour Volume 2, Second Edition, War Machines of the Adeptus Astartes. There was a Volume 2 before and I actually have Volume 2 right here. It might be part of my nostalgia collection and when I get round to bringing you more videos of old books but this came out in 2004 so 12 years ago still in the hobby 12 years ago back then this is sort of like what it what it looked like yeah pretty uh nice nice pictures and things though black and white but you had these really nice detailed diagrams i really liked it look at that black and white with the firing awesome and that book set you back Again, I think it was similar price, 40 or 50 quid, 255 pages. And the new one, let's see, 257 pages, but it's got a couple of pages of adverts. So it's, it's almost the same um, length. Instead of the Land Raider Crusader and the Thunderhawk and the Land Speeder Tempest, this one has the Land Raider a Cerberus and a Looks like a Grey Knight Slam Raider. Without further ado, let's open it and have a look. So, first cover, lovely impression there of the fell blade. I love my model, just speaks volumes right there. Let's have a look. So, War Machines of the Adeptus Astartes, Volume 2, Second Edition, first published 2013. So, actually, three years ago, it seems. I didn't think that the Sakaran was around three years ago. Let's have a look. So you've got these stamps on it. Welcome Battle Brother to the second edition. You've got a map, Holy Terror, Phaeton. Really cool. It looks like it's um, all the worlds. Griffin 4, Riser, Badab. Then you've got Armorium Astartes. Executioner's chapter. Oh, I love it. Look at this. Companies, different companies, and then you've got fleet, two Sestus assault rams, two storm eagles, and then fire up to gunship. That's probably going to be my loadout for my fleet pursuit force. Barbarous incursion. That looks like it's classified. Angels of death. Selected glories. Oh, I like this. This is pretty cool. Oh, this is very nice. Look at this. Excellent. Wow, that's awesome. Look, so you've got your contempt patterns. No Leviathan, though, obviously, because this is a few years ago. But you've got your Sororitas, Fella Pattern Exorcists. You've got your Grey Knights, Land Raiders. And there you go, you've got your Cerberus, Typhon, Fellblade. I wonder if they had the Falchion and the Glaive. Probably not the glaive, but there you go. Straight away, Land's Legacy, all about the Land Raiders. Lovely, look at that. Yeah, if you like Space Marines, if you like tanks, this is this is the book for you. That's the uh, front picture of the first edition. Wow, look at that. It's all numbered. Incredible. Helios. Proteus. Still might get a Proteus, but the £100 sort of mark is putting me off it. And so on. Crusader. Lovely artwork and photos. And there we go. Look, look at that. Uh, Proteuses. Different patterns of Proteus. There's a Proteus and Armoured Proteus. There we go, Helios, Proteus, and Achilles. Land Raider Prometheus. Predator Battle Tanks. Classic photo there, classic. Bar Predator. And so on. So this isn't really a review, this is just like my overview. Demos Predator. So you're going to use a Demos Predator. Flamestorm Cannon, Magnum Melter, Plasma Destroyer, or Heavy Conversion Beamer. 
So they're the four that I think that are available. I do love that plasma destroyer. It says it's got a turret mounted auto cannon. So obviously it's a bit different than what you have in the Horus Heresy with a predator cannon, um, which I think is four shots. But it means that you can bring it into 40k and have these cool weapons. Relic, Sakaar and Battle Tank. So your armor, 13 all round, three hull points. And the accelerator auto cannon looks like it's got the same rules and things. There you go. 135 points is not too shabby. 175 points with the last cannons. That's not too shabby either. It's a shame because obviously this is a few years ago. It, you can't take a pintle mounted heavy bolter um, or or a pintle mounted storm bolter or anything like that. Um, and then battlefield support. So you've got Vindicator, Whirlwind. I do like that mod, that variant of the Whirlwind with that missile pad, that missile box. Hyperius. Relic Whirlwind Scorpius. Looks like it's got the same rocket barrage. Really nice tank that. Now there we go, there's a Vindicator. Different types, shells, where the shells are kept. And then Depth Society's heavy tanks. So you've got the Fellblade heavy tank. Really enjoy reading this. So you can bring your heavy, your super heavy Lord of War. Looks like it's the same sort of rules, 100 inches each. Ordnance. It can take a pintle mounted heavy bolter though, just in case all those guns aren't aren't enough. Just in case uh, turret mounted twin linked fell blade accelerator cannon, two sponson quad mounted quad las cannons, a hull mounted twin linked heavy bolter, and a hull mounted demolish cannon wasn't enough. You can also take a pintle mounted heavy bolter. Oh, some lovely pictures. And then Typhon. That's 350 points, which is hilarious at the moment because obviously you can take this as a super heavy Lord of War and it'd be cheaper than your um, Horus Heresy which I think is almost 400 points which has got this Dreadhammer Cannon which is 7 inch, ignores cover, yeah. <laughs> and the Cerberus Heavy Tank Destroyer still got this silly concussive feedback rule however the trade-off is the shock pulse so Titan super heavy vehicles, any vehicle basically. If it gets a penetrating hit, then it can only fire snapshots. However, you know, the, the feedback is if it gets one, then um, it can lose a whole point. It's got six, it's not too bad. Um, and again, this is only 355 points, so I, I think this is before they put the tax on it at 400. And again, the armor is, is 13. It still, still puzzles me why tank destroyer has 14 to the sides but 13 to the rear but the chassis is exactly the same maybe it says there maybe it says I'm, I haven't read it so maybe, maybe it does explain it somewhat and your Spartan you can take your Spartan here and it's only 300 points so a little bit more than a, a land raider and you're getting five hull points you're getting your quad lads cannons but obviously you're missing out on your, your sort of flare shield um, but you do get your um, armoured ceramite and you can transport 25 models so there you go um, some more pictures of it attack craft so you got your thunderhawk come on please bring out that plastic model at the end of this year or, or even next year for your big campaign you really really wish to see that plastic thunderhawk gunship and here are the rules I don't think much has changed you can still give it the D And some more nice photos and things of it. The transporter. I do like the unloading loading vehicles. It's pretty cool, but you know it's a Lord of War. So how many Lord of Wars can you really take? And do you want to just have one of these instead of a th a proper Thunderhawk or a Fellblade when all of your other vehicles and things can just arrive on the board edge? I mean they look awesome. They'd be a great centerpiece. Um, especially carrying the Rhinos or, or one Land Raider, but I don't know what, why you'd replace your Lord of War choice, but I'm sure people do. I've seen many pictures of them, but Storm Eagle Assault Gunship, so you can take one of these in your 40k army. That's a lovely looking picture. It's almost like a Horus Heresy sort of artwork that they've done there. 255 points. 
So you get the rock pattern, you get rock warheads. <laughs> um, so you get the Vengeance Launcher, which is your the Horus Heresy, I think, and then you get the rock warheads. Submunition packs known as rock warheads, which shower the target with multiple armor-piercing rockets. You've got the pilot and the gunner, and then they just say, let's rock. Four shots, strength A, AP3, twin linked. That's when I saw the missiles on it, I thought, you know what? Strength five, AP four, blast, it just doesn't cut it. Rock warheads is where it's at. And speaking of another cool model, and um, the fire up wrapped gunship. These models they look awesome. I'm really a big fan, but they're an absolute pain to build because they're a combination of resin and plastic and either have it all resin or all plastic. But when you start introducing some plastic elements into it, it becomes really difficult and, and lengthy to, to build to get all those pieces correctly aligned and, and together. So this fire raptor, you can take one of these, it doesn't look like much has changed. But again, in my review, I'll obviously be comparing them, all the vehicles. So you can take a Sastus Assault Ram. I like this model too, and it's all, all resin. I like the, the Fire Fury missile battery. I like the Magna Melter, the fact that it's got Magna Melter on it. I think you can only carry 10 models, which is actually less now than the, the new flyer that will be coming out next weekend, you know, the Corvus Black Star. That can carry 12 models and it can even take bikes. This can't take bikes, it's just, you know, single file, five on each side. But there you go. But I suppose it being, you know, Death Watch, you'd expect it to be a little bit better than and a few things out there. And obviously it's it might well be a little bit less armed and obviously it's it's quite heavily armed too land speeders so you've got storm tempest which i have and you've got the relic javelin attack speeder um which javelin attack speeder there we go that's the horus heresy one with the front and side armor of 11 and i think it's pretty good because the tempest only beats a normal land speeder by having the front as 11 so for cheaper points, the Javelin one, although you have to pay for the, the Twin Link LAS Cannon, and, and that comes with a Twin Link Cyclone Missile Launcher. At least the Tempest now comes with Flak Missiles, which is pretty cool. Um, before it could only come with Frag and Crack, but again its sidearm is a bit, bit poor. So for the Javelin, to have side and front 11 means small arms fire isn't going to do it much damage, but it's still obviously vulnerable to, to your heavy bolters and of course your missile launchers and last cannons. But it's cool that you can get a javelin one. Drop pods, normal drop pods, death storm, dreadnought ones. There you go, you've got your Lucius pattern, you've got your death storm, you can have them in your 40k army. And speaking of dreadnoughts, here they are. So you've got your chaplain dreadnought which I've got. You can pretty much kit it out in, in anything, um, so it's nice to have the rules in this. And you've got a Siege Dreadnought. I do love the Forge World Siege Dreadnought. It's definitely on my list to get at some point. Mortis Pattern Dreadnought. That has the two missile launchers, and then you can have two twin link auto cannons if you, if you wish. But yeah, that's the Siege Dreadnought there. Look at him. Looks absolutely beast. Um, I like the one with the two missiles on him on the top as well. Yeah, he can take up to 200 killer missiles 10 points each. There's Chaplain Dreadnought, there's the Mortis, and so on. Contemptors, yes. So, got the, uh, forget the Betrayal at Calf, um, Contemptor. Look at these, these ridiculously well posed Contemptors. So, you get the Contemptor, then the Mortis pattern. Um, that has two twin link turvy bolters, but you can change it to two carriers pattern assault cannons and you can also give it a carapace mounted cyclone missile launcher. This Contemptor Mortis pattern dreadnought has this helical targeting array. It will gain sky, sky fire and interceptor so you could really give it um, two twinning auto cannons and the cyclone missile launcher and, and have it as sort of like an ambulus pattern um, which they don't have in here of course just bear that in mind. Rhino there must be a lot about the Rhino and the Razorback. So you've got your Damocles Rhino, and then you've got your Infernum Pattern Razorback. Um, so that has the multi-melter. But I don't think there's much difference to that, other than it just has a multi-melter. But there you go. There's the Infernum one, Infernum Pattern. 
It might be because they created a, a multi melter on it and they never sort of had rules for it. So that's sometimes what happens. Support weapons, tarantula, Ooh. um, sentry gun. It says it's heavy support choice, but I think in some places it's fast attack. Weapons battery, so it gives you options of having a weapons battery with quad heavy bolter or laser destroyer. Doesn't say anything about the uh, ones with the quad launcher, which are Horus Heresy. Grey Knights, got a Grey Knights Land Raider. Plenty of plenty of variants up there, plenty of variants. And then you've got the Rotomer Pattern Redeemer. It just looks really cool. I really like the model on, on their website. It's the uh, It's got the um, Flamestorm Cannon and then it's got a Hull Mountain Twin Linked Psy Cannon um, with Psyche Out Assault Launchers, which is awesome. I mean, look at that. It looks, looks awesome, that model. Next to some Grey Knight Terminators. Then you get the Razorback, which has the Twin Link Psy Cannon instead of your normal armament. And the Grey Knight's Dreadnought, which again has a Nemesis Doomclave with a built-in incinerator and a side cannon and that model looks friggin epic too wouldn't mind getting one of them actually that looks way better than a dare I say it no I won't say it Grey Knight's Thunderhawk even I mean it's got this reinforced Aegis but I can't really see much much else different and then you've got some sort of Inquisition thing Inquisitorial Land Raider Prometheus but it's got this battle all specs and improved comms and it's for Grey Knights so there you go and then you've got a Rhino Chimera which I do have and a Valkyrie there's the Valkyrie squad squadron Sisters of Battle Rhino Immolator Exorcist Repressor, and that's it, and that's the appendices. So you got the special rules, armored ceramite look, legacy of glory, vehicle summary. That's nice. So it gives you all the the armor values at quick, so you can look at them quite quickly. Then you get you get all the the weapons. That's quite quite beasty. Then you get sort of like a blast marker sort of index as well. Apocalypse rule summary even. And then it just shows you book one, book two. Maybe they hadn't made book three back then, but you got your volume one, second edition Imperial Guard, and then the Taros campaign, which I actually have volume one of that book. The Bad Dab War, Tune of My Mirror, volume 11, and Apocalypse, Aeronautica, and the Model Master Class, which I may well be getting. And then finally at the back page, you've got a picture of the Typhon. So yeah, great looking book. Can't wait to give you a review and that'll be coming up in the next few weeks. So thanks ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.